Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Before we get into today's rumors and news around the silver and black, I got to give some love to today's sponsor, Black Sunday Shop. If you love the shirt that I'm wearing or if you need some high-quality Raiders gear, guess what? Go to blacksundayshop.com. Use code Mitch where you can save 20% off. All right, let's talk about the very first story here. It's around Derek Carr and... Vic Tafer on his podcast gave his opinion on what Mark Davis is going to potentially do with DC in 2022. Here's the thing. A lot of times, and I've said it maybe close to 100 times already on this show, the new head coach, whoever Davis hires, he's going to make a decision on DC. Well, according to Tafer, he doesn't think that that's going to happen. He personally thinks that Davis is going to be the one that makes the final decision on Carr way before that they make a hire for head coach. So, the reason why he doesn't want Carr to have that influence on the ability to make the decision of whether or not he's going to be sticking around in 2022. Now, here's what Tafer had to say on Carr's future. I am of the belief that Mark Davis will make a decision. He hired the last two coaches, basically, and he'll hire this one, so I think he'll use whatever he has decided on Derek to kind of frame who he wants to bring in. I'm sure he'll listen to ideas and he'll be open to some things, but I think his mind will pretty much be made up as far a quarterback before the coaching search really gets going. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. When I saw this quote, I really think this is a bad way to run your organization. Not that I don't think Mark Davis is a smart person because there's a difference between being able to run a business and being able to run an organization and then actually being able to put a good quality of product on the field. I think Davis is a good owner. I don't want Mark Davis, though, making these football decisions. These are the type of decisions that you let Mike Mayock, that you let the new head coach do. And one of the biggest issues that I know a lot of Raider fans and I know a lot of Raider Nation has is Mark Davis does this kind of stuff. If you don't have the ability to make these right decisions, you need to be able to hire somebody that does it. I really think it's a bad move by Raiders ownership and by Mark Davis making the decision on what he's going to do with Derek Carr and not letting the new head coach, not letting Mike Mayock really give their two cents on it. But hey, that's just what I think. So what I gathered from that is this going to be Derek Carr's final season with the Las Vegas Raiders. Well, before I give you guys my answer, how about y'all let me know? And this is actually going to be the pinned comment on today's video. Is this car's last season with the Raiders? I want you to go ahead and scroll on down in the comments. Why for yes, or I want you to let me know and for no. I'm going to go ahead and give this one three no chalky heads. I believe that it's pretty likely that 2021, maybe I guess technically the end of 2022, it's going to be the, the final season of Derek Carr. I really truly believe he's got four games left. Look at this quote here from Tafer. I think Mark Davis will make a decision on Carr and then go into the search with that in mind. I just don't know if he's going to rely on a new head coach to influence him giving Carr a $180 million extension or whatever it's going to cost to keep him past this year. When I read that quote, Tafer's kind of hinting at the idea that I think Mark Davis already has his mind made up. He sees what the product is. He just saw the Raiders get absolutely boat race 48-9 to against Kansas City. And if you're saying, all right, I'm going to make the decision because I don't want the new head coach to be influenced by that type of money for Carr, that sounds like you already know what you want to do. Tafer is also guessing, and this is a number that I've thrown out there multiple times as well, $180 million. He's basically projecting a five-year, $180 million contract for D.C. So when I sit up here all the time and I say, the way that you really truly build this team is by trading Carr, getting picks, and then invest the team around that new quarterback, I think that's what you have to do. Why? Because if you decide to keep Carr, that's the type of money you're going to have to pay him. And I'm kind of done sitting here saying, all right, we got to put a good team around D.C. You're right. But if you give all that money to D.C., are you going to have the ability to actually do that? If you're going to go for a home run swing, if you're going to try to compete with Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, you trade Carr, get the picks, hit on those draft picks, and then invest, invest in free agency. All that money you're saving that you would give to Carr, you invest it on building a true team. 
because believe it or not, it, the quarterback is not the only position on the field. So after seeing all that, I can tell you this, it's going to be an eventful off season, and luckily, we're going to be making videos every single day in January, February, March, I don't care what it is, you're going to get a video on this channel. So what I want you to do is hit that subscribe button underneath the video, turn on those notifications, and then when you click the notification bell, I want you to click all, because if the Raiders make a trade, if they sign somebody, if they do anything, and if it's big enough news like Raiders moving on from Derek Carr, I can guarantee you this. We're going to be going live, and I don't want you to miss it. All right, the next thing coming up here is around the 2022 NFL Draft, and I'm actually hoping I'm going to be in Las Vegas for this. I'd probably only give that one one Chucky Head. Speaking of only one Chucky Head, the Raiders drafting an offensive tackle. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 25% chance of happening. Not that I don't think it's a good idea. I do think it's a good idea. It's just... Being able to put a pinpoint on what position the Raiders are going to take, number, I guess, technically 11 overall is where they would be right now, that's only a 25% chance of happening. So Todd McShay, he released his initial 2022 NFL mock draft, and he had the Raiders going out and picking DeMarvin Leal, defensive tackle out of Texas A&M. It not only fills a big need, but here's a word, and you know how, like, when you were a kid, if I said the F word, you basically knew what it was, and obviously I'm saying it now, and you know, if I were to tell Raider Nation the V word, that's versatility, because that's what all Gruden, that's what Mayock always said, always versatile. Well, if you see a player being defined as versatile, you might as well put them up on the Raiders draft board. But now, I'm partly kidding, but I do really love Leal as a prospect. This dude is a do-it-all defensive tackle, the best defensive tackle in this year's class and if the Raiders could get him at 11, I would love it. Now, if you don't care what I have to say, here's what Todd McShay, ESPN's NFL draft analyst, had to say on Leal. Las Vegas loves versatile type of players up front, and Leal's picture might as well be next to versatile in the dictionary. He can win inside with quick first step. He can turn speed to power on the outside. He can make plays and run defense with excellent range. Unique Gakwe and Max Crosby are impact players off the edge, but the Raiders are overmatched on the interior every week. They have to nail this pick, and Leal, my number six overall prospect, hits need and value here. So what do y'all think? If it was draft day and... Roger Goodell, you can boo him, walked up to the podium, the Las Vegas Raiders with the number 11 overall pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. They select defensive tackle DeMarvin Leal out of Texas A&M. What would you grade that? A, B, C, D, or F? A was great, B good, C average, D bad, F fail. My grade would be this. I would 100% give this an A. This would be a slam dunk type of move. Not only are you getting a phenomenal player, not only are you getting a dude that I'm very confident saying is going to be worth a first round pick, it's also going to fill a major need. The issue with the Raiders have done their past few drafts is they fall in love with a player, they try to fill need instead of getting best player available. Now, we'll see what type of players are available when the Raiders are drafting, and don't worry, we're going to be doing a whole bunch of draft videos the entire offseason, and basically even now, but I'm telling y'all right now, I would absolutely love this move. Something that I know you guys are going to absolutely love, Raiders gear, because you literally can't get enough of it. If you're looking for some Carhartt Black Sunday sweatshirts, we got them available for y'all, 20% off, blacksundayshop.com, use code MITCH, if you can't remember that link, it's going to be in the comments, and it's going to be in the description. Whether you need a beanie hat, whether you need a new snapback hat, they are also available, and this is actually pretty cool. With orders over $100, you automatically get a free bandana, but don't just stop at $100. Why not $200? With orders over $200, you get a cinch bag, a bandana, and two patches. Just make sure that you use code MITCH. Well, that way you're going to get gear 20% off BlackSundayShop.com. And if anybody out there is a collector, which I, knew, I know a lot of people out there are collectors of pins, patches as well. They have all this type of stuff. Bottom line, if you need something for the holidays, it's BlackSundayShop.com. Use code MITCH. I'm also going to say this. This deal is not going to last too much longer because I actually believe this might be the final week that we're going to do 20% off. So if you want it, go ahead and take advantage of it. Now let's continue to talk about the draft because not only do I want to talk about Todd McShay, not that he 
doesn't know what he's talking about. But personally, I, I think I know the Raiders better than just about anybody out there, and that's not a shot. It's just we do a lot of homework here. Here are the top draft needs for Las Vegas as it stands right now. Nat number one, it's right tackle. you got to find a right tackle. I'm sick and tired of watching Brandon Parker and Alex Otherwood try to just block. It's an absolute disgrace to blocking. Defensive tackle comes in at number two. Wide receiver for me is three. I'm then going to go quarterback at four and offensive guard at five. Though, offensive guard is kind of shaky for me because the Raiders are going to stick with Alex Leatherwood despite him being an absolute uh, shit show recently. And I believe they might try to stick with John Simpson as well. But right now, here are my top five needs for Las Vegas coming out of the draft. In terms of some draft targets... Now, Aiden Hutchinson's probably going to be the number one overall picker up there. I didn't put guys that I really, truly believe had 0% chance of the Raiders drafting. And I also did these draft targets based on the Raiders picking at number 11 because that's what Todd McShay's mock draft was at. Evan Neal, Charles Cross, those are your top two offensive tackles. The issue, they're both left tackles. So we'll see if they want to play right tackle. Tyler Lindenbaum. best center in this year's draft. One of the best centers that I've seen in a very long time. If I was the Raiders... I would draft Linderbaum and then try to honestly kick Andre James to guard. Like, that's that's how good this kid is. He's one of the best center prospects I've seen in 10 years. DeMarvin Leal and then Jordan Davis. If Leal's not there and you're like, you know what, I really want a defensive tackle, I do think Jordan Davis is up there. Now, maybe you want a wide receiver. Here are my top five wide receivers as it stands right now. Chris Olave. This dude just gets open. Jamison Williams, Garrett Wilson, very solid prospects. Drake London, I really wish he would have been able to finish the season out healthy because he would have having a hell, and I mean a hell of a year at USC. And then Jahan Dotson. Dotson I like. I just would personally not take London or Dotson at pick 11. These other three receivers, though, you could have maybe talked me into it. What about quarterback prospects? I'm going to say this right now. I do not want the Raiders to draft a quarterback at pick 11 or even with their first round pick. I don't. And if that means we don't get Corral, Pickett, whoever, you know what, then that's going to be part of the equation. Now, if you decide to move on from Derek Carr in free agency and then you need a quarterback, that changes the equation. But if Carr is on your team, then I do not want them to take a quarterback in round one. I think you can find value in round two, especially in a class that a lot of the quarterback prospects are a little bit unknown at this point. All right, what about this next story coming up here? The Raiders, they are the best week 15 value bet. This is according to PFF. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give this one only one Chucky head, and I'm going to say a small shred of truth, one no Chucky head. However, this story has changed a little bit because when PFF wrote this article, they said that the Raiders were six and a half point underdogs to the Cleveland Browns, but now that has changed because of some new news that has come out around Cleveland. This is from Adam Schefter, and for those of you that don't stay up to date, these are the type of things that you need to watch the show for. The Browns have put basically eight players, Jarvis Landry, Jedrick Wills, Austin Hooper, Wyatt Teller, Tack McKinley, FM, Drew Forbes, JoJo, and then Ross Travis on the COVID list. I would not anticipate these guys playing, which means the Browns are going to be without basically five starters, two practice squad guys, and a guy on IR. That's a major loss. When I first started talking about this, when I was scripting everything out, the Raiders were six and a half point underdogs. The over-under in this game was at 42 points. Now, the over-under has dropped down to 40. The Browns are sitting there at minus three. And the reason why I'm giving them only one no Chucky head is because I don't know if it's the best value bet anymore. Because I also don't know what Raider team is going to show up. If the team that showed up on Thanksgiving's here, yes, absolutely. It's a great value bet. If it's the team that I saw against the Kansas City Chiefs, it's one of the worst teams in the National Football League. So what I want you guys to do right now, go down in the comments section. Let me know what you're thinking about the Raiders on the road, NFL Week 15, up against the Cleveland Browns. It's going to be a cold game. I believe wind's up to 17 miles per hour. It's not going to be as crazy as what we saw last year in a game where I believe the Raiders won, what, 16-6. to It was a really, really ugly game. But let me know. Down in the comments, predict the score, Raiders up against the Browns. Now, usually I always tell people, hey, hit me up on IG, ask me questions, which you obviously can. But the other thing that I really want people to start following me on Instagram for is 
news and rumors updates because I'll do a show and then there's just constantly updates that obviously happen. What I try to do because I literally can't make a show every single minute of the day, I take those updates that I have on Twitter and then I put them up on Instagram. That way you never miss any information. One of my top things that I put on IG and Twitter yesterday was players that I would build around. And these were four players that I said that the Raiders should absolutely build around. Renfro, Miller, Andre, James, Darren Waller. And the predication that I made was younger players so that you could build for the future around them. On the defensive side of the football, Crosby, Gakwe, Hobbs, Merrick, one, the main, main dude that people are like, I can't believe you don't have him on your list. Well, the other guy was Malcolm Coons, but then it was Divine Diablo, the rookie out of Virginia Tech who the Raiders drafted in the third round. And He's been making a pretty good impression, at least on me, and I know he's making a good impression on Raider Nation. Now, he's got 25 tackles this season. He's definitely been struggling a little bit in coverage. He's been solid against the run, which is why I see him starting this week up against Cleveland. Now, here is PFF grades. Overall, it's actually not too bad for a rookie, 59.0. Pass rush, all right. He's been excellent against the run, 82.0. It's the coverage, though. If you want to make it and be an elite linebacker in the NFL, you need to learn how to cover a little bit better, and that's been an area that he's struggled. But hopefully he's not going up against Travis Kelsey every single week. Now, here's what Divine Diablo said, and this is why a lot of people, and I mean a lot, a lot of people are starting to like him because he called some dudes out, and I actually like that he did this. So personally, I feel like a lot of people, just for a lack of a better term, just fold. They'll just lay down, come to practice, not ready to practice. I know I'm a rookie, but I don't want my teammates to do that. I want to make sure they're ready to practice, and we bring that intensity every single day. If you love that Divine Diablo, the rookie, went ahead and said that, I want you to go ahead and type DD. Show my man some love. If you want to type 5, you can go ahead and do that because he's 100% right. I want dudes that show up to practice, that show up on Sundays, Mondays, Thursdays. I don't care what day it is. It... It takes a lot for you not to come to play. But wearing that shield, man, you should take that with so much pride. And when I saw Divine Diablo say that, I absolutely love that. Now, I'm not saying I would build around him yet. I still need to see a little bit more on the field. But you bring that intensity and you can back it up. Hell yeah, I will go to bat for you. And I know Raider Nation as well. So show Divine Diablo some love. Start spamming double Ds.